Om Shanti. I would say we have quite the crowd tonight. <laughs> How lovely. As uh, Brother Eric did last week when he was pinch hitting for Michelle and I, we were both away, which is rare. Um, if you choose to come out from under the balcony and come on forward, you're more than welcome to move up if you're comfortable doing that. And hi, Zoom people. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for coming in person. It means so much to have a live audience. So I have to tell you that I am extremely content and uh, calm. And I will also tell you that I live 10 exits away on the LIE. And there was an overturned bus, apparently. And we will move. I didn't ever saw it. They must have cleaned up the bus before I got down this way. But we were not moving. Or we were going one mile an hour, five miles an hour, occasionally 10. And uh, it took me what would normally be a 20-minute ride. Maybe 25 in traffic was an hour and 10. So I didn't know I'd be here on time. So why am I telling you all this? Because I lived the whole ride in peace and calm. And what I've learned here is the secret to not letting, as much as possible, outside circumstances decide how I'm going to think and how I'm going to feel. So last week, Brother um, Tony talked about where we live and we all have an address and we all are in various places but i live in my thoughts and my thoughts can very often derail me take me to a place i don't want to go to first yeah i have the thought and what comes next feeling ah. <laughs> right i'll never get there on time oh my goodness didn't happen and then our actions depend on how we feel about the thought, right? So I'm sitting there in all that traffic, listening to a recording that I wanted to hear for the past week, Sister Denise, and perfectly calm because I had no control, but I had all the control in the world. And here's the litmus test. The real test is that my body didn't react. So I know when I'm really being truthful with myself when my body doesn't get cuckoo. Because I used to have a body that got a little cuckoo at the drop of a hat if things weren't doing what I thought they should be doing, if people weren't behaving a certain way. I could just be turned upside down. And I find that when it, it's on a visceral level, when my feelings don't make my body have anxiety when I can maintain a state of peace because the drama is the drama. You've learned that here. How many of you are new tonight? Are you new here? Any newbies here? Welcome. So you will learn if you come back and we keep repeating the same secrets to peace. So I'm happy to be here on time and to introduce Sister Tina, whom you've met many, many times. Dr. Tina um, is here to talk about, in our theme this month, of reclaiming our spiritual independence. That means reclaiming what was originally ours before we got all messed up by all these lives and happenings. We used to be very naturally peaceful. And so she's going to talk about reclaiming true spiritual power. And you know what? I did it tonight, I think, and I don't know what you're going to talk about this evening. Come on up if you will. But all I know is I am not the Louise I used to be, except sometimes. There's no perfection yet, but I would say 90% of the time I live in a world that's much more peaceful than the old world. And I'm talking about being an adult, not just a child. You know? So without further ado... I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Sister Tina, enjoy. Greetings, everyone. Warm welcome. 
I'm also happy to see so many of you here. <laughs> I think first time. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. You set the context so beautifully because reclaiming true power means actually what you just shared, you know, from where you were to where you are today. That is how we reclaim our power. But, you know, before I was thinking last month, we prepare one month ahead of the topics that we want to share. And so last month when I was thinking, what is the topic going to be? And it is the theme was overarching theme is to do with independence. So I said, okay, what we are learning here in our daily discourses through the meditation that is taught by the Brahma Kumaris is basically to become independent. And that independence is the true power. It comes from recognizing my true power. And so I felt that it's very interesting. Um, I'm going to show you my PowerPoint. Can they see? No. Or I have to... Um. So in the meantime, okay, there it is. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, okay. So when I was thinking of this whole topic, reclaiming itself, this word, you know, presumes the whole idea that once upon a time I had it and perhaps today I have lost it. And so there is therefore the feeling or the want to get it back, right? It's like, if I never lost a key, I'm never going to find a key, right? In other words, there is a desire for something only because I have lost it. It was there, right? But reclaiming in this sense, we are talking more about the spiritual power. We're not talking about reclaiming something which is physical or social power, to, so to speak, but also, um, when we talk about reclaiming spiritual power, we are thinking more at a deeper level of what is true power, right? So in a spiritual sense, when you look, we are not also looking at something that is lost perhaps in this one lifetime. It could be something that we have lost over a longer period of time. And so I don't know if this would make you feel comfortable or not, but let's just imagine and think that I, as a spiritual being, right, I have gone through, how do I change this? Yeah, I already explained this. So let's just imagine this whole idea that I, as a spiritual being, have gone through many incarnations, or the cycle of birth and death. And during this process, perhaps something happened, right? So it's like, you know, when the energy is set into motion, right? When the energy is being used, then automatically the energy goes through the phase of reduction. This is a very natural law of entropy, that anything that is in an ordered state goes through that disordered state and reaches a phase where now there is nothing. A negative law of entropy means now an external force has to come into the picture. So true power in that sense means I have lost something over this long period of time that was once in a very pure state, in a very ordered state, in a very powerful state. But today, because something happened, right? what happened we will see in a bit. But something happened that caused the reduction or you can say acquisition of something else. Either I have acquired some alternative energies and so there is adulteration in my form of being powerful, right? It's not very pleasant when people say I am powerful. We don't like it, right? <laughs> because it's, it's associated either with physical or financial or social or you know, something to do with the position and all of that. So we don't like it because it's in the adulterated form. But 
if there is no adulteration in that pure form, it's really beautiful. And so that's why reclaiming that true form of power becomes something that everyone would strive for or would want to feel, you know. And so when I say true power, I, I'm, again, not talking about physical power or the power that we get from the society or the power that comes from property or possessions or whatever we have. But this is the power which is innately present. It's an inner power that helps me to generate control over the self. So true power is not something that is authoritative in nature or that will... Um, that will want to control others. That is not true power. But true power is to do something with the inner self. Something that will help me to control myself so that I don't react to the external forces or I don't react to the external stimuli or I don't react to thoughts of others or I don't react to uh, behavior of others or personality traits or sanskars, whatever you want to call it, right? Like, just now, Louise was saying she was stuck in the road, right, right on the road. And um, on the street, she could very easily have what the thing is going on. Can they do it quickly? Can they move quickly, right? All these thoughts could have come, which are stimulus for us, right? And it, it's kind of saying to us that in a, in a mundane way, if you look, we have given our, you know, control to other people around us not only our family, but even outsiders. Like if somebody, you're just driving and somebody cuts you or does a rash driving or, you know, honks at you, what do you feel? You feel disturbed, right? You feel agitated, you feel aggression, right? And so that means that I have, I am feeling certain way because of somebody else. That means somebody else is controlling me in other words, right? I remember when we were children, and we were many in the family. So whoever we are watching television, we are watching the same program, same movie, same cartoon show. And yet whoever had the remote control is powerful. <laughs> Have you done that? You even can't let go of that remote control. You want the remote control to be in your hand because it makes you feel powerful. So similarly, now I have to think about reclaiming that power. My remote control should be in my hands. Right or not? Yes, you all agree? Yeah. So inner power is something like that. Of course, it's very subtle. It's intangible. You can't really say that, you know, unless you see that person in action, you can't really say somebody's powerful, but you can feel that they are powerful. So in that sense, it's intangible. It's very subtle. Inner power is also not submissive or doesn't compromise or inner power is not something that is acquired. Sometimes you could feel that your power is suppressed or acquired or, you know, there are some other energies, but it just means that you just have to, you know, it's in the dormant stage and you just have to awaken it and it's right there. So you can feel like that, but really inner power is something which we all want so that we can have control over the self. Now, all of us, including everyone who's present here today, we already are on a spiritual path. We are practicing some form of spirituality because deep down there is a desire to be a little bit more peaceful. You know, I wish I can be a little bit more stable. You know, I want to be a little bit more loving. So this desire or this um, practice of spirituality which where you want to develop the self it means that you are powerful, right? Good news. <laughs> it means that you are powerful. But then to uh, enhance this power, where we are calling it inner power or true power, then I have to know the true self. And that's why the larger question that we always try to answer is who am I? You know, Because if I understand who am I, then the identity of I is directly associated with the power that I feel. Because once you know who I, who I am, then you can reclaim your power from that knowing of who am I. From that identity, you can reclaim your power. So we say that spiritually speaking, again, we say we are spiritual beings. We are beings of light. We are, um, you know, energies that are present in this body. 
I say I am not the body, but I am res residing in this body, right? I am life force in this body. I play a role through this body. So there is a clear distinction between a spiritual being or a bodily being, right? When I have this misidentification of myself, then that is what leads to ego. That is what leads to conflict. That is what we also call as body consciousness. And uh, where do I get my true power from if I have to think this? You know, so sometimes people might think that they're getting power from these four P's. Have you heard of this four P's before? If you've been here, maybe you have heard it before. But Usually in the world, if you see people, then many a times they will say that the power comes from position, profession you're into, or the possessions you hold, or the people that you're associated with. Let's just explore this a little bit. Let's say I have a position, I have a rank, right? I'm in the army, or let's say I'm elected official and so I have a rank or I am head of the organization, or I am head in the society or community or friend circle, family, wherever. But if I have a position, then what happens? If I have a position, then what happens? No, in a good way, what happens? <laughs> People respect you, right? People listen to you. You're not easily ignored. You're not going to be told that I don't know what you're saying, right? They will understand you. They will do what you want them to do. They will respect you. They will have regard for you, right? And so, therefore, there is a craving for this P. Because this P, this position is helping me to feel powerful when the truth is I am weak, because I am I am taking my power based on this position. Let's say tomorrow I don't have that position. Then people will not respect me. People will not listen to me. People will ignore me. People will not have regard for me perhaps, right? So if I am only dependent on that P, then my um, it's a kind of a sign that's telling me I am weak. And it could be same for all the other P's. You know, if you have a lot of possessions, if you have property, and if you have a lot of money, right? You feel that you're very powerful because you can do anything, you can buy anything. Or if you have a profession, which is very, you know, uh, like you're a surgeon or you're an engineer, then you feel that people respect you more. Or if you're connected with people who give you a sense of protection or who give you a sense of connection with higher beings in the, in the society, then automatically I am receiving power from all these things. But these are very tangible things. These are very temporary things. And so that power that I'm receiving, or at least I am feeling, is a very tainted form of power. And so we say that if I am trapped or if I am moving behind or desiring these trappings of power, which is position, possessions, profession, people, etc., then these are the signs that I am weak. Because innate true power, your personal inner power, will not be so much dependent on the position. You might have no position in the society and yet you will feel very powerful because it's inner power. Inner power is coming from the inner knowing of who I am. It's not dependent on these four Ps. Is that making sense? Right? Yeah, you feel that? So that's why we say that true power comes from knowing who you are. Just, the, just knowing the fact that I am a spiritual entity. I am energy, energy that is indestructible, energy that cannot be destroyed, energy that cannot be harmed, energy that is always present, right? Just this truth, this fact makes me feel powerful, that I am immortal energy, right? And so one of the factors that really helps me to be stable in my power is knowing who I am. Now, if you go a little further than this, I am not just a energy, right? I am energy which is very peaceful. I am energy that is very loving. 
I am energy that is very pure in nature. I am energy that has a lot of experience of joy and happiness. Right? So when I see myself as that sparkling jewel of light or star of light, then I have some of these innate qualities, which are not only qualities, but they are also power. So love, for example, it is seen in the form of a quality of the spiritual being, but it is also a power. When love becomes a power, transformation becomes easy, right? Peace is not only a quality of the soul, but peace is also power. If I have the power of peace, I can change the whole world. <laughs> so similarly, purity is not only a quality of the soul, but it is also power. Because purity helps me to remove all impurities from within me completely become free from impurities yeah so i'm going to call louis or maybe michelle can help i want everyone to receive one of this paper and there is a pen so there is a small exercise that we will do you see the star basically you draw this same thing on the piece of paper that you will get and you you write there instead of star you write your name where I have written star, you write your name and then you draw these five lines and you show um, you show these five qualities on each end of those lines. And then I'll explain you once you have done that part, then I'll explain you what is the next part. So... Um, Brother Eric, online people can see the screen. I think they can see the screen. I'm not sure. Okay. So when you're ready, you let me know. Okay. It's a very simple exercise. Okay. You have to draw exactly the same thing. Draw a little star. In the center of that star, write your name. Yeah. You are that star. And then you draw these five lines like you see on the screen. You draw this, right? You draw these five lines and you write these five qualities or powers, whatever you want to call them, at the end of each. So this exercise is basically to tell us what am I lacking and to what extent I am lacking and what are the measures I can take to reclaim my inner power? This is what the exercise is about. So if you have done that much, then I'll tell you the next step. You draw a star, right in the center of the star, your name. Draw these five lines from each end. Most likely if they're equal, that will be nice. And then at the end of each line, you write these five powers of the inner self if you will or qualities of the inner self yeah ready everyone okay now at this point right at this point imagine it is zero zero here also it's zero 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 right so this is the beginning and then at the end of the line it's 10 yeah it's 10 here it's 10 here it's 10 here and it's 10 over here. Okay, got it? So each line is basically a scale of 0 to 10. Maybe I should also do it with you all. Should I? I don't have a paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found, but give me one. Thank you. And then when you have written 0 to 10, now you take a moment and ask yourself, to what extent do I feel I experience and express this quality within me? 
and you give yourself a number from 0 to 10. Yeah, you give yourself a number from 0 to 10. And let's say this is... So this is how it should look initially. Now let's say, for example, I say that I have peace around five, right? So I put five on it. I say I have 50% peace in me, right? Or I say I have, let's say, 60% love in me. So I put number six or 60, whatever, right? Purity, let's say I say I have 75. Or bliss, whatever it is for you, you know, you don't have to write same. You write what you have for you. Yeah, you put a number on each. Now you connect those dots. So you connect those dots and create a new shape for yourself. Yeah. If you don't know what peace looks like, you know, peace is basically patience, introversion. If you're still, if you're centered, if you're very calm, if you're quiet then that means you're very peaceful. Power means you're disciplined, you're very confident, you're very stable, you're determined, you're tolerant, you're faithful, you're trustworthy. And you can easily discern and decide. That means you're powerful. Bliss means you're very light, you're content, you're satisfied, you're happy, you're spontaneous, you're sweet. That means you have a lot of bliss. Purity means cleanliness is there, authenticity is there, Love for truth is there, reality is there, flexibility is there, beauty is there, intuition is there. So then you it means you have purity. And love means there is a lot of respect, generosity, gratefulness, mercy, kindness, gentleness. Those are some of the signs. And this list is not complete, you know, but it gives you an idea to just kind of see which one I have most, right? So now you drew this, you have something like this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly like this. Huh? <laughs> okay. This one doesn't have number, but you are you have your numbers. So if you have something like this, that means it's good. You're doing right thing. Because none of us is 10 on 10, right? We all have some inner work to do, correct? If we all were 10 on 10 on everything, then it would look something like this, right? A complete circle. But the fact that we are not complete circle, that means there is this space in between, correct? And what is this space filled with according to you? What is this space? No, Michelle, you're not allowed. <laughs> huh? What is this space filled with according to you? Yeah. Yeah, see, it's so easy to understand, right? <laughs> Very good, thank you. So somebody said it's filled with negative sanskars or negative energies, or we sometimes call them as substitute energies. Because love is an energy, right? It's a power, power is an energy. Peace is an energy, right? It's a power, power is an energy. Similarly, purity, bliss, happiness, power. These are all the energies of the soul, which are pure energies of the soul, the innate energies or the inner power of the soul. But when I don't have that 10 on 10, that means there is something else that has been acquired or has been replaced. So now peace has been replaced with what we call as the algae, right? You all know what algae is? Anybody who does not know what algae is? Hmm? You know what algae is? At least say yes or no. Huh? Yes. Anybody wants to know what algae is? You want to know? Huh? It's nothing wrong. 
you can just say yes i want to so algae is basically that green stuff slimy green uh, plant you know that grows on the water bodies right it covers the water bodies right huh it's slimy it's uh, it's very soft you know thin material it's like um, green photosynthetic plant basically it grows on the body of the water it could be pond it could be stream it could be river it could be anything and when it grows what happens basically the sunlight is not able to penetrate to the bottom of the ocean or to the bottom of the water body where all the plant flora and fauna and all the water ecosystem is present now when the sunlight is not able to reach it what happens they're not able to do photosynthesis they're not able to make their food they die they're not able to receive the warmth of the sun and so they can't function properly and when things start to die underwater then they rotten and they smell and it's foul and it disturbs the entire ecosystem and they're not able to sh shine and live and grow and flourish right all of that is stopped so similarly now imagine this is the star the point of light, the soul. And now the soul is covered with this algae, right? If the soul is covered with this algae, that means the light of the soul, the beauty of the soul, the power of the soul is no longer able to flourish, no longer able to grow, right? And so spiritually speaking, we have this acronym for algae here is anger lust greed attachment ego these are the big forms but of course they have smaller forms also so when i say anger is the big form of the algae the other extreme of it you know, the lowest form of it could be in the form of impatience or irritation or a little bit of frustration or going into the silent mode getting upset it's, these are all forms of anger, right? Similarly, if there is lust, then the smaller forms of lust could be in the form of desires, right? Or constantly having desires is a form of lust. Greed, there is constant feeling of dissatisfaction, constant feeling of comparison, jealousy. All of that comes from mm, greed as a big form. Attachment, mm, attachment likes and dislikes, feeling lonely, right? Feeling this, this is mine, this is mine. So that is lower forms of attachment. And then ego, the lower forms of ego is insecurity or um, inferiority complex or feeling not good enough. I am not good enough. I am not enough. I am not, you know, good like that. So those are some of the lower sides of the bigger forms of these but somewhere something has happened where I have acquired these substitute energies within myself and that circle that you saw is filled with that negative substitute energies so now you know your chart right so you know to what extent you're lacking inner power let's say it's the inner power of peace so if you have 50%, like I said, 50%, that means I know I'm lacking 50% of inner power of peace. Uh, to what extent I'm lacking? 50% I'm lacking. So what is the measure I have to take? I have to take the measure to release these negative energies of anger or irritation or frustration and absorb the light more of peace within myself. And that is true for each and every aspect, if you see right? Now, how do you disempower yourself? And this is a big topic in and of itself, but I'm not going to go into the details of it, but just socialization plays a big role in this. When you teach infant from your infancy, you're taught this is right, this is not right, boys should do this, girls should do this, this is how you behave, this is how you do. So you start believing some of those things as irrefutable. And when somebody behaves in a different way, when they start to self-care, for example, or when they start, start to talk about self, then you feel this is not right, this is not right, and you accuse them, or you put them down, or you try to diminish them, or you try to lower them. So that is kind of disempowering somebody. The most effective way of disempowering somebody is to ensure that you create a lot of doubt in them for themselves. And if you're creating a lot of doubt 
in them about who they are, then they're easily manipulated, they're easily deceived, they're easily controlled, and they will never stand up against someone who is actually controlling them. We see a lot with women and things like that in patriarchal society, in villages and stuff like that, right? But that is one of the big ways that we disempower ourselves when we start to get afraid, like the song was saying or the commentary was saying that I'm not so much afraid of my light as much as I'm afraid. Sorry, I'm not so much afraid of my darkness as much as I'm afraid of my light. So it's kind of disempowering in the sense I'm diminishing myself. I'm doubting myself. I'm not having faith in myself. I'm not trusting myself. And in, in those forms, I'm actually disempowering myself. And it could be for others also the same thing. So the question then comes, oh, I'm going backwards. So then the second uh, way how you can reclaim the true power is from your connection or your contact with the higher being. That means the one who is the source of all powers, the ocean of all powers, the supreme being, right? The powerhouse, we call him. When I am able to connect myself with this being who is unchangeable, who remains constant, and he is 100% in all those energies that we just saw, he never becomes peaceless, Nothing, no scene of the world can make him hate anyone. He's ever loving. He's ever truthful. He's never um, in the state of ignorance, right? He's, he's always in the state of you know, purity, never entertains any form of impurity. Always in the form of almighty authority, right? He's always executing that inner power. So when I connect with someone who's like that, right? then naturally I'm able to draw upon his light and might into myself because there is no trace of peacelessness there. So when I connect with that being, you know this in science, in physics, they say that electricity flows from higher potential to lower potential. You have known this? No? From higher potential, everything goes to lower potential. So he is at 100, I am at 50. Where will the energy go? From 100, it will go to, right? It will come into me, no? It's, I'm not going to lose anything, but I'm going to only hmm, gain. And so in connection, when I connect with the source, I am reclaiming my energy because that memory that I was 100% peaceful at once upon a time. I was pure at once upon a time. I have acquired these alternative energies or these substitute energies that were never part of me they're not natural they're not innate right when I begin to understand that when I begin to connect like that then I'm able to reclaim my energy again yeah uh, and then the third form that we can reclaim power which comes from your karma we say that if you perform pure actions, if you perform charitable actions, if you perform benevolent action because of something you did, if somebody else is receiving benefit, then naturally from their heart, they're sending you pure energy, which we call blessings, right? So they're sending you blessings. They're sending you good wishes. They're sending you good energy. And that energy also helps me to intensify my inner power. It helps me to reclaim my lost power. So when we are talking about reclaiming the true power, we are actually saying that I want to reclaim the lost self-sovereignty, the control that I had over myself, the control that I had on my words, my thoughts, my actions. I don't just speak anything. I just don't do anything. I have the knowledge of what thoughts are beneficial. I have the knowledge of what words are going to be beneficial. I have the knowledge of what actions are going to be beneficial. So knowing that I, I execute the power of choice. Power of choice to then execute the power of thought or power of word or power of actions. 
each one of this can be a big class in and of itself, right? I will inspire you to join our Raj Yoga meditation course if you are really more interested to go into the depths of some of these things. But it's very, very interesting that how you have the power of choice and you can then choose the thought that you want to have. Because like Louise was saying, she was very calm. The fact that she was calm means she had very peaceful thoughts. Because as are the thoughts, so are the feelings. As are the feelings, so is the reaction in the body, right? Now, if my thoughts are not peaceful, if my thoughts are not very elevated, if my thoughts are not very good, then automatically my feelings are also colored ac accordingly, right? And so it's very important to understand that the true power comes, one, from knowing who I am, second, from knowing that I have a contact or connection with the supreme being, and third, I have the understanding of the philosophy of karma. Right? Use, use them. So we receive inner power from being in this awareness that I am light energy, energy that is peaceful, that is powerful, that is loveful, that has connection with the source and understands philosophy of karma. Yeah? Anyone wants to say anything at this point? The mic is not on. Any question, any comment at this point? There, uh, Anybody so, wait one second? Yeah. Let's share it with Zoom people, okay? Who, who had a hand raised? You? Okay. Claim your power. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are a lot of elements around you that uh, try to kind of take away your power. Right. You know, that's when you really need to have that energy to reclaim that back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, could you talk a little bit more about that? Like there is. A, Can you, you know, give example of what is it that you're talking, which is around us? Hey. Like you want to be calm, you are calm, but then somebody around you does not like to see you calm. Okay. They keep, keep we triggering you. That. We are coming to They that. keep <laughs> triggering you and then you still kind of distance yourself. Yeah, okay, very good. Right. I'm coming to that. You distance yourself and they still see that you're not disturbed and they still want to trigger you. They want to push your button, but right. don't let that button come to you. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's very challenging. Yeah. But, you know, you have to keep doing it. So, you know, how to gain that power over and over again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um. So... Basically, one of the ways that I lose my power or I disempower myself is because I am taking a social system to be my support system. The social system could include your family, could include your friend circle, could include your workplace, could include your educators, could include your elders, could include so many different things. But it is in the society that you are connected with. And if I am basing my support system there, right? If somebody is financially dependent on someone, let's say, for example, then automatically that becomes their support system. If somebody is dependent on something for someone from someone, then automatically that person becomes their support system. If you are in a family setup and you need something from that, then you are, you are based your support system is there. But whenever a societal or a social system becomes your support system, then that form of dependency creates disempowerment. And so that's why we say we should have as a spiritual entity, as a non-physical entity, I should have a non-physical support system non-physical support system or spiritual support system is different from physical support system and definitely not a religious support system, right? Spirituality is different from religion. So spiritual support system is the source, which I already covered. So when I have my support system as one source, then I can remain independent and I can free myself from all the chains 
that are trapping me, whether it is the chain of or trappings of power or um, property or position or possessions or people or whatever it can be. But I can free myself, right? When I have one non-physical support system, because the non-physical support system will always be there with me, no matter where I am and how I am and what I am, it does not judge you does not make you dependent so one of the things we say is that um, there are some indicators to know that you have inner power and these are some of the indicators so if you have real inner power that means you are unimpressed unimpressed means you're not influenced even if someone has a speciality or someone has a weakness that doesn't impress you, you remain in your dignity of who you are. You appreciate them, but you are not impressed by them. True power will be intuitive in nature. They can see what is happening here. They don't need words. They can understand intuitively. They will know. Someone who has inner power remains undisturbed. They are like they have they are like detached observers like louis remained undisturbed i'm taking your name again and again so that was such a good example but they have self control i have control over the thoughts that i want to create i am not going to create any thoughts that are going to disturb me and then therefore agitate me or make me feel uneasy or uncomfortable right so that kind of self control where i am undisturbed they are emotionally independent they're not dependent on someone or something, right? They, they are very true to their conscience. That means they're very honest people. They're, there is nothing to hide. There is transparency. They know who they are. And they are very true to their conscience. If they go against their principle, their conscience will bite them. And so they have that understanding. They're very secure in who they are and very confident. So if somebody is seeing you, it's good. If somebody is not seeing you, it's okay. If somebody is acknowledging you, okay. If somebody is not acknowledging you, it's okay. So they are confident. They are not dependent again on somebody else's recognition of who I am. They're very courageous and brave because you're kind of going on a different track than the society would want you to, right? Like how she was saying, I don't know your name. But she was just saying that somebody is trying to push my buttons and I am not getting disturbed. So they push even harder, right? So that is like you're being courageous by not getting affected by them pushing your buttons, right? So that is a sign of having inner power. You're very flexible. That means you are able to adjust and accommodate and adapt. And if you are put on the stage, you are flexible. If you're with alone, you're okay. If you're with a lot of people, you can adjust. If you're behind, the stage you're okay you know it doesn't matter where you are put you can accommodate but but flexible does not mean you don't have limits you have your boundaries and they should not be crossed you have that understanding of to what extent and if somebody doesn't like it then that's too bad <laughs> but you do have your boundaries you do have your principles and you're not willing to compromise with your principles or your boundaries right and uh, sometimes we say if you are like that then you have to pay a price but it's okay because you are very rich you have inner strength, you have the um, currency of inner strength. And when you execute that, then you remain uncompromised. So that is a very beautiful quality or indicator to know that I have inner power. Inner power, if you have, you remain invincible. No matter what someone tries to manipulate you, deceive you, turn you, twist you, you remain undefeated, right? Uh, you interact with integrity. You're very solidity in yourself. That means you you really believe in who you are. You're very self-aware and responsive of whatever you're doing, whatever thoughts you're creating, whatever words you're speaking, whatever actions you're doing. They're, they are a form of a response, you know? And of course, this list is not complete, but you can, this is like a starting point, you know, like a thought for churning. You can think, uh, do I have some of these qualities? Do I like to be like this, right? No? Would you say, I would like to be like this, no, right? You would like, no? Um, and then I, I know in that form then that I have inner power. I have 
these uh, true powers within me, which is basically coming from those innate qualities, peace, purity, love, right? Pa power and bliss, uh, wisdom, truth, right? All of that helps me to execute the inner power. Now, um, so I'm going to change the gears and now come to what she was just speaking about we'll we have four kinds of people actually there are six but i'm not going to talk about the last two very little time i have <laughs> so i'm going to quickly try to cover this um let's say there is one kind of people what about people who are aggressive they look powerful and they're quite intimidating what does it make you feel If you are in presence of some, you yourself could be this, right? <laughs> but each one of us has someone in our lives who is a little bit more, you feel they're a little bit more powerful than me, or you feel a little bit intimidated in their presence, or you feel they're aggressive, or you feel they're very, you know, you don't know when they will say something. So what does it make you feel? You know, what is your response basically? That's the question. How do you respond to or how do you feel when you are in presence of such a person usually it is seen that sometimes you get intimidated by an intimidating person or the other option is you don't get intimidated by an intimidating person but both of these choices is decided by you it's really nothing to do with that person I am the one, let me finish. I am the one who is making that choice whether I should get intimidated or whether I should not get intimidated. And right? I am the one who's making the choice, right? Now, sometimes they might be really trying to intimidate you. And sometimes they're actually not trying to intimidate you, but they are intimidating. Right? <laughs> And it's not necessary that it has to be a person. Sometimes it can be a circumstance or a situation in your life. Let's say you're going for an interview, right? Or let's say you're going for an um, um, exam or some big test, right? You feel intimidated, no, at that time by that situation. Although that professor, like I remember when I went for my job interview, I was so scared, but I remained calm. Nothing was seen on my face, but inside I knew I had some thoughts. And so, but the professor was very friendly. Although they make you feel that it's an intimidating environment and setup, but actually it's a belief that I have trained myself that these kinds of interviews are intimidating or these kinds of exams are intimate. Now, I, somebody has trained me to think like that, right? Or I have trained myself to think like that. I have to undo this training. Right? There's an example of dogs that is given. In some cultures, they teach children that dogs are very friendly. You can be very, you know, uh, friendly around them, happy around them, you know, be like family around them. And then in some cultures, they teach you dogs are very frightening. Be careful. They will bite you. They, you have to be, you know, careful, you know, like that. So now this is two different trainings that are going on, right? But how my responses to a dog is based on my training. So my training will decide, but I can undo this training. I just have to tell, no, it's not that intimidating. This person is not really intimidating. And then things can change, right? So you can think about this a little bit more. Then the second situation is, what if I am weak and disempowered and I meet someone who is in their power? What does it make me feel? Actually, I am feeling weak because I'm not in my self-respect. I don't recognize my true inner power. So I feel weak in somebody's presence. So you will feel jealous. This emotion or feeling of jealousy arises and it really is very harmful, right? That person is very good to you. They're pretty okay. They're in their true power and you want to harm them. You don't want to acknowledge that they're better than you or you don't want to see them in their light. But because you are not that, you dislike them. And that jealousy takes over them. And then that is disempowering. 
But instead, if the first step is if I acknowledge the biggest problem in this is there is denial mode going on. I am not jealous of anyone. <laughs> right i am okay but actually there is a lot of jealousy going on and so we have to be careful about that we have to acknowledge admit understand meditate study practice and really not entertain this negative form of energy the third question i don't have too much time to explain all of this but it's something we can discuss another time <laughs> The third third category of people, what if I'm truly powerful and people find hard to manage with me? That means I am shining bright. I am, you know, in my self-respect. I have a beautiful light and I'm, you know, really doing well. Uh, but people are feeling uncomfortable with me. They're not able to handle my energy. They're not able to be with me in an equal way so then in that sense what I should do this question was difficult for me to also answer I was trying to understand and then I when I thought of, I did the four quadrants method actually to put four kinds of people and then I had to call two of my seniors and ask them and see if my answer is right you know what is the best way to handle this my answer was to be humble and their answer was to be caring to be uh, very to have a lot of humility to understand to give them the uh, benefit of doubt to be very generous and that will help sister Jayanti who is currently the administrative head of the organization additional administrative head of the organization one time she asked Dadi Janki that I am not jealous of anyone but others are jealous of me what should I do so Dadi told her you have to work on your ego so in uh, spirituality, we don't sometimes say power alone because power alone has been misused. And so we sometimes call it soft power. Spiritual power is soft power. And soft power will be seen in a very loving way. It will be very comforting. It will be very caring. It will be very humble. So it shouldn't feel discomforting. But if somebody's feeling like that in my presence, then I have to assess myself. I have to understand myself. And I have to say, yes, I'm powerful. So I have to be a little bit more careful. You know, I have to be a little bit more sensitive and then work around that. Right. Um, so I think that's it. Three I, I, three I did. I won't have time to do others. But I think it covers the basic idea that power really comes from knowing who I am, connecting with the source and uh, performing good actions when I am on the field of action. Yes, I'll give you a chance to ask. Oh, I answered. Yeah, yes. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you think we have time for a short meditation? Yes, or... but I want to ask anyone wants to say anything, comment anything. Oh, we can yeah. check that. Yeah, here are a couple. One second. Cool. Yeah. I just love the way you explained us so beautifully everything. Mm, I'm so you. grateful and thankful. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that, Anyone else? That, yeah. Okay, I'm getting my exercise. <laughs> which I can use. So now you know it's not hard to reclaim your power, right? Okay. That's the take-home message that it's not hard to reclaim. I just have to be true to who I am, stay connected with the source, and constantly perform good actions. Yes. Well, I'm a. I agree with everything you're saying, but I was just had a thought about you. That you know, quote, being connected to the source. That that's what I find in other people that I, I can see that they don't they don't have that. Hmm. But some people have it differently the way you folks do. You, you know, because I read the Raja Yoga book, and I, I've also had two spiritual teachers. Hindu teachers. So I mean, people that don't have that advantage. Uh, I guess sometimes a lot of people pray. That's that's their 
yeah their connection to the source or and that's fine in other words it's kind of like the connection to the source is is, is an individual i guess yes. it's an individual yes yes choice yes it's no no it shouldn't be individual choice but it is individual choice to select whoever you want to call source well, that's and, what i that's what i mean yeah that's fine yes okay yeah. let's take 2 minutes and we'll finish uh, with just small guided meditation and express our gratitude to the one who's giving us all this knowledge right so i will close this so we can see okay om shanti just reminding myself of this beautiful mantra i stabilize myself in the form of a spiritual light energy energy that is very beautiful in nature to be deep with innately powerful innately peaceful i see myself in my true form and whenever i see myself in this form then very naturally i choose not to see my past not to see my story i choose not to see what people think or say about me i choose to go beyond all the wounds and hurts and i just stabilize myself in my inner power inner strength in this form of being a sparkling star i am constantly radiating light of peace purity love unconditional form of happiness and inner strength i have the wisdom of knowing my true form and therefore i am also able to connect and maintain a contact or a connection with the supreme source it is in this form that i truly feel comfortable and light it is in this form that i recognize my ability to remain undisturbed when i see myself as a sparkling star i am able to go beyond everything that is limited temporary and no longer serving me and when i become stable in this form i feel i am receiving light from the source i feel his energy is coming into the core of my being and i am naturally connected with the supreme being the source of all powers i feel i am no longer in this realm but i'm beyond in the realm of stillness this realm where there is complete peace and purity where i have access to unconditional love where i remain in connection with the one who is my eternal support system and now i gently as i feel content and rejuvenated and replenished i gently return back to the consciousness of the present and i know i have access to this place and to this divine being so i will choose to go again and again and again whenever i feel like replenishing myself so i can continuously be who i am and stay in my inner power thank you everyone for contributing your energy 
Thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. No, we're running a bit late. Thank you, Sister Tina. Thank you. Two quick things. Number one, applaud yourselves because this is the first time I can remember that we have outnumbered the Zoom people. Yay! <laughs> lovely, lovely crowd. Bring a friend next week for our brother Eric. Beautiful. Welcome. And we have an email list if you would like to receive weekly announcements on email. As you exit, you're going to give, please, uh, Sister Michelle your pens, and we can add you to our email list so you'll know what's going on here every week. Okay, thank you for coming. And listen, when that driver cuts you off on the road, if you're new at this, you can pause a second and change your thought, okay? <laughs> you can be loving to yourself, even if he cuts you off. Or she, home Shanti. Good night, Zoom people. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming.